Welcome back to my channel. Listen, we need to talk about Casey Johnson, Hollywood's poor little rich girl. Casey Johnson, a 30-year-old heiress to a pharmaceutical fortune, lived her final days in stark contrast to her affluent upbringing. She was found dead in a dilapidated mansion in Los Angeles, lacking basic amenities like water and electricity. This stood in stark contrast to her childhood in a luxurious Fifth Avenue apartment, where she had nannies, butlers, and indulgent gifts. Despite her privileged upbringing, Casey struggled from a young age, engaging in extravagant shopping sprees and seeking public approval, especially from her mother and father, causing apparent shame on her very private and wealthy family, all which she did intentionally as an act of revenge on her neglect. The Johnson family's wealth originated with Robert Wood Johnson, Casey's great-great-grandfather, who co-founded Johnson & Johnson in 1886. Initially a family business selling surgical dressings, it thrived during World War II due to its medical innovations like waterproof duct tape. By 1945, Johnson & Johnson was a household name, making its family members millionaires. However, this immense wealth led to family conflicts and dissipation. Seward Johnson, one of Robert Wood Johnson's sons, was particularly notorious for his tumultuous personal life, including multiple marriages and unconventional relationships. His marriage to a Polish chambermaid, Basia, and the subsequent inheritance dispute with his children attracted significant attention. Seward's death in 1983 left Basia with an inheritance of 250 million pounds, sparking a three-year legal battle with his six children, who also had substantial trust funds. This dispute was eventually settled out of court with the children receiving 25 million pounds from Baja's share. The scandal surrounding this event was detailed in a literal book titled Undue Influence, The Epic Battle for the Johnson & Johnson Fortune by David Margalik. Another Johnson family member, Robert Wood Johnson II, also known as General Johnson for his role in World War II, was a formidable and no-nonsense businessman who remained the CEO of the family's business until he reached 70 years of age. He fired Robert Wood Johnson III, Bobby, his own son, as the company president following a disagreement. Bobby, who died five years later at the age of 50, struggled with cancer and alcoholism. Robert Wood Johnson II's mantra regarding Bobby was, Bobby is nothing, Bobby will amount to nothing. Bobby left behind five children, including Woody, Casey's father. Tragedy struck the family as two of Bobby's sons, Keith and Billy, died in 1975, one due to a cocaine overdose and the other in a motorcycle accident. The surviving siblings inherited their estates, making them incredibly wealthy. The hardships faced by Woody's brothers had a significant impact on him. Woody rarely discusses his brothers, but it's evident that these experiences shaped him and made him more guarded about revealing his emotions. The inherited wealth enabled Woody to purchase the New York Jets and engage in Republican fundraising, notably supporting George W. Bush's campaign. Even his divorce from Casey's mother in 2001 was conducted discreetly as Woody and Sale, Casey's mother, are public figures but maintain privacy about their personal lives. On the other hand, Aunt Libet, Casey's aunt, is one of the richest women in America and has owned expansive properties, including a vast apartment in Trump Tower, a home in Vail Ski Resort, and a farm in upstate New York. Despite her colorful personal life, multiple marriages, and high-profile relationships, she values her privacy. Both Casey and her aunt shared a vivacious approach to life and an understanding of growing up in a wealthy environment. However, they differed in their views on the press. Casey used social media and gossip columns to communicate, while Aunt Libet fiercely guarded her privacy. In Casey's early years, she grew up with her two younger sisters, Jamie and Daisy, and was diagnosed with acute diabetes at eight years old. She lived a life of luxury as that was the only language her father knew how to communicate with, money, and this unaffectionate relationship would be her ultimate downfall, as Casey would soon develop a borderline personality disorder. She attended Dwight School, where she befriended fellow heiress Paris Hilton. While Hilton was already involved in socialite activities, Casey's rebellious tendencies had not yet emerged. At 14, she co-authored a book with her father about managing diabetes, and her academic performance earned her a place at Brown University in Providence, Rhode Island. However, her time at Brown marked a key turning point in her life. Casey Johnson's life took a stark turn in her 20s, diverging dramatically from her privileged upbringing. She left university after just a few months, citing reasons ranging from not being allowed to keep her pet dog, Zoe, in student accommodation to finding life in Providence dull. Returning to New York, she became associated with Lizzie Grubman, a prominent publicist known for a notorious incident involving her SUV and a group of bargoers in the Hamptons. Casey initially interned at Grubman's firm before trying her hand at beauty journalism. 
Approximately eight years before her death, she relocated to Los Angeles, blaming the relentless media attention in New York for her move, despite her own engagement with gossip columnists. Casey's mother, concerned about her daughter's increasing presence in the media, reportedly played a role in exiling her to the West Coast. Casey purchased a two million pounds house in Beverly Hills, though she moved out in 2004 after an alleged burglary involving a former friend, Nicole Lentz. She then settled into a lavish Bel Air mansion filled with opulent decor, extensive wardrobes stocked with couture, and rooms teeming with designer shoes. Her affinity for dogs, often referred to as her babies, was apparent throughout her life. However, her pets, including Zoe the Poodle, seemed to create chaos wherever they went, even soiling a $12,000 Hermes Birkin bag, and once defecating a luxurious hotel in which her father simply fixed with lots of his money, of course. Casey, blonde with lip fillers and breast implants and clad in luxury, the spitting image of Hollywood, lived a life of extravagance in Los Angeles. Despite her desire to act, her acting career consisted mainly of minor roles, often portraying herself. Notably, she appeared in the 2002 documentary It Girls, which focused on Manhattan socialites. Another documentary, Born Rich, created by a relative, Jamie Johnson, drew attention to the ultra-private lives of wealthy heirs and heiresses, including Casey, which caused discomfort within her family. Casey's public scandal escalated when she claimed that her aunt, Liebet, had been involved with her boyfriend, John D., the manager of the heavy metal band Megadeth. This scandal unfolded during a trip to Cambodia, where Casey sought to adopt a toddler named Lavissa. However, her aunt opposed the adoption, leading to tension between them, and this volcano finally erupted. Emails published in the New York Post later suggested an intimate friendship between Libet and Dee, further straining their relationship. Casey's openness with the media, unlike the rest of her private family, exacerbated the situation. In the wake of the scandal involving her aunt and boyfriend, Casey's relationship with her family fractured, particularly with her father, Woody. Her experiences in Cambodia prompted her to attempt a life change. In 2007, against her parents' wishes, she adopted a Kazakhstani girl, Ava Monroe, who had to live with Casey's mother due to Casey's instability. The girl was named after Casey's idol, the equally tragic yet iconic Marilyn Monroe. And when Casey reportedly showed up at her father's house to introduce her new daughter, he banned her from stepping onto his property and reprimanded her when the incident brought bad press. Even near the end of her life, Casey sent him letters and he ignored her. She wasn't his problem anymore. Casey's life became increasingly erratic due to prescription drug abuse and her complex romantic life. She was openly bisexual and was previously in a tumultuous relationship with Courtney Semmel, daughter of Terry Semmel, the former chairman of Yahoo. After their separation, Casey began associating with a different crowd, leading to further issues. Casey, seemingly driven to achieve fame similar to Paris Hilton's, turned 30 without completing a full rehabilitation program. Reportedly, her father cut her off from her trust fund when she refused to enter another rehabilitation clinic late in the previous year. He wiped his hands clean off her. Casey's circle of friends expanded to include Jasmine Leonard, a London socialite and short-lived reality TV star who had moved to Los Angeles in pursuit of fame and had become close with Casey. In November, Leonard called the police after discovering a used vibrator in her bed, along with missing items such as Louboutin shoes, Hervé Leger dresses, legal documents, and underwear. This led to Casey's arrest and grand theft charges, which could have resulted in up to a year in jail. Casey's life was spiraling out of control. Shortly after the incident with Leonard in 2009, she entered into an even more random and bizarre relationship with Tyla Tequila, a reality television star known for her show, A Shot at Love with Tyla Tequila. The two declared their engagement through an online video in early December, kissing on red carpets, and Tila moved in with Casey. Their relationship became highly publicized through tweets and promises of releasing a sex tape. Despite efforts from friends to help Casey, she remained deeply infatuated with Tyla. During this tumultuous time, Casey's health took a severe hit. She had virtually stopped taking her insulin, indulging in junk food, and resorting to NyQuil to aid her sleep. She had also turned to social media platforms like Twitter and Facebook to communicate with friends and followers, effectively turning her life into a sordid, real-life soap opera, chronicled in cheesy tabloids. Her final Twitter post hinted at buying a new car and expressed concern about accommodating her daughter, suggesting she was contemplating her future. On New Year's Eve, a night typically marked by partying, Casey was alone in her bed. 
On the morning of January 4th, 2010, at around 11.30 a.m., when Casey failed to respond to knocks on her door, she was discovered unconscious. And this individual, how old are they? 30. Male or female? Female. Do you think she's passed away? I'm pretty sure. She's ice cold and her hands are turning blue. I have two other people you, here with me and we all think she's dead. And you're not in the room with her now, are you? No. Okay. All right, we'll get the paramedics out there immediately. Are you willing to go in there and tell me what you see again? Okay. Paramedics arrived promptly but declared Casey, the Johnson & Johnson heiress who had experienced both a dream and hellish life, dead at the scene. The last time Tyla Tequila saw Casey was before a massive fight in December, after which Casey turned off her mobile phone. Six days later, Casey's body was discovered by a housekeeper, indicating that she had been deceased for several days. In the aftermath of Casey's death, Tyla Tequila visited Casey's West Hollywood home to retrieve her belongings. When Nikki Hilton and Bijou Phillips, Casey's friends, arrived at the house, Tila Tequila called the police, believing that they intended to have Casey's two pet dogs put down so they could be buried with her. Like some sort of pharaoh, I guess. However, the Johnson family spokesman denied this claim, stating that they had no intention of euthanizing the dogs, and they were getting the older dog, Zoe, examined by a vet. Tyla Tequila eventually allowed Casey's friends into the house, where they removed the dogs and Casey's personal things, including a box of insulin syringes for her diabetes. It was revealed that Casey had spent her final days in deplorable conditions, living in a squalid environment with no electricity, water, or gas, and rats in her swimming pool. While Casey might have relished the attention surrounding her untimely death, her grieving family likely found the extensive media coverage distressful nightmare. It was a needless tragedy brought on by Casey's dual illnesses and her reckless approach to both. It was also a tragedy brought about by parents too rich to care enough. Her father apparently still stands firm in his belief that he did all he could to help her. Her friends, if you can call them that, have reported that she was one of those celebrities who think they're invincible. But diabetes just doesn't walk that way. And we are all fleeting souls trapped in very mortal and fragile bodies. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.